It's Platt, and today we head to Sweet Home Chicago. That's next to Platt's Beer of the Week. So the particular beer we have today is called Dino S'mores. Comes to us from the fine folks at Off Color Brewing. A little background to Off Color Brewing. Off Color Brewing, of course, is located in Chicago. Sweet Home Chicago, as the old song says. Uh, the brewery was founded in 2010. 13 by a couple of gentlemen, John Laffler and David Blaitner. Now, these two gentlemen met back in 2008 while attending the Seibel Institute. Now, some of you may not be familiar with Seibel. Seibel is the oldest brewing school in America and probably the most prestigious, even though there are other fine programs out there. I think Oregon State has a good brewing program. I know Cal Davis has a good uh, viticulture uh, program, but I think they also have a good wine Program. There's other schools out there now, but Seibel was the first, and some people still say the best. Now, these gentlemen, like I said, met while they were at Seibel, but after they finished their uh, education at Seibel, they both ended up interning at Metropolitan Brewing. It was while they were at Metropolitan Brewing that they started really working on the business plan for off-color brewing, really working on the idea at the same time while working on their craft, becoming better brewers. Uh, so they later did end up opening the brewery. Not a lot of history if you go to the website. You can't find a lot of details on the history, stuff like that. Pre pretty basic, pretty straightforward. Uh, they do have a tap room and a bottle shop, both located in the Chicago metropolitan area. So I thought we'd kind of focus on some of their other beers. Uh, the first beer to note is called Tooth and Claw. It is a 5% ABV dry hopped lager. Uh, something I'm just starting to play with uh, in my home brewing, so uh, I, I find that a little bit interesting. Next is a beer I would just try because of the name. It's a really cool name. It's called Apex Predator. It's a 6.5% ABV farmhouse ale. Now, what makes this beer unique is they use something called uh, free-rise fermentation. What does that mean? Well, when you're brewing, the yeast produces CO2 and it produces alcohol, but it also produces heat. And this is something I've talked about, especially in the kit beers, whatever, about, you know, keeping at room temperature, at a constant temperature, away from direct sunlight. You didn't want, you wanted to avoid the temperature fluctuations because that does affect the yeast. Um, I've also talked about a couple other videos where I use a keg fridge where I can adjust the temperature, sometimes for other beers, generally lagers, but some ales I'll, I'll use that for to, again, kind of maintain the temperature, nice steady temperature. In the free rise technique, you just kind of let it do its thing. A lot of time in these uh, beers, and there, there are ales that do this, lagers, you, you do need to control the temperature. Uh, but in these ales, they may start off in the mid-60s, and the temperature may work up into the low to mid-70s. Now what happens there is the warmer the temperature fermentation, the more t flavor that the yeast adds. If you ever had Belgian beers, beers especially farmhouse beer, ales, they love the kind of funkiness, a little banana, the different flavors the ales or the uh, yeast produce. It's that it's not necessarily only about the malt and the hops and the flavor profile. They let the yeast do a little bit of work. So that's why this beer is uh, kind of unique. Uh, the next beer we're going to talk about is called Beer for Golf, a 4.5% uh, ABV beer brewed with lemon, lemon peels, and black tea. Basically, it's kind of a beer version of an Arnold Palmer, which... Yeah, it's a classic uh, drink on the golf course. I believe they have two or th three of these beers in the Beer 4 line. I think there's a beer for baseball. I think there's a beer for pizza, whatever. So I'm going to presume each one is kind of catered toward either that specific sport or that specific food or whatever, you know, crafted for that particular occasion. Uh, last but not least is called Gator Time. is a 6% ABV wild fermented ale. Now, uh, this ale is uh, brewed with cherries and aged in Italian Barolo barrels. Now, if you've never had Italian Barolo, it's a classic Italian red wine. Uh, fairly decently bodied, plenty of tannins. This is not a beer I'd necessarily give to my white Zinfandel friends, but I think has a lot of great flavor. I think it's a really good glass of wine, uh, great with meals. And that's, I kind of find that an interesting selection on the barrel. Should impart some really unique flavors. Uh, after reading this, I kind of got thinking about it. Man, that would be kind of cool maybe to age, you know, a brandy in, maybe some kind of fortified wine in your, in your Port Madeira type uh, wines. 
you know, those more classical port, you know, port is from Portugal, of course. And Spain is known more for the sherry, so maybe ages something like that. And an Italian Barolo barrel might, might create some unique flavors. But anyway, just something I was kind of thinking about. Well, enough about those beers. Before we check out this beer, we're going to check out the stats. All right, so today I thought I'd talk about just the concept of s'mores beers in general. Uh, you know, a couple hundred years ago almost, they came up with porter-style beer, which had a little chocolate. Then we ramped up to stouts. Eventually, we got to milk stouts. Uh, you know, I've tried peanut butter milk stouts. There's marshmallow beers. So eventually, we were going to get to something like this, a s'more-type beer. There's plenty of these s'mores slash dessert beers out there. So I thought we would talk about, again, or just kind of review some of the other uh, type, s'more type beers out on the market. First, I want to start with Shiner uh, S'more Chocolate and Marshmallow Ale. This is a 5% ABV brown ale, which is kind of unique because, especially in just in the dessert beers in general, but specifically the s'mores type beer, these tend to be stouts. Maybe a few porters thrown in, but brown ale, when I saw that, I thought, well, that's kind of unique. That's a little different. Again, the brown ales do have those dark malt and the slight hint of chocolate to it, but not to the extent of those other beers. So it'd be interesting to try this beer. Uh, Shiner, uh, their Shiner Bach was probably one of the first quote-unquote craft beers I ever tasted and one, one of my favorite beers of all time. So I'm definitely going to keep my eye out for that. Uh, next uh, is from Shorts Brewing in Bel Air, Michigan. It is their 8% s'more stout. Now that's a little more traditional of the style. Again, stouts are more popular. Also a little higher ABV went from 5% to 8%. 8%. Um, uh, again, these, these beers tend to be just a little bit bigger than that 5% brown ale. Uh, next from Ceramac Brewing is their s'mores porter made with uh, real chocolate and vanilla. Again, Porter stylistically is close to Stouts. Uh, you might remember a couple weeks ago I did the Fuller London Porter. And again, plenty of chocolate notes, so complimentary, complimentary flavors there. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, last but not least, when we're going to talk about beers that kind of push the envelope, try new things, you know, kind of eclectic, we obviously have to go to the fine folks at Dogfish Head, and of course they have a s'mores beer, something they call their Campfire Amplifier. It is a 6.5% milk stout, so again, stylistically kind of falls in line. Brewed with real marshmallows, graham crackers, cocoa nibs, cinnamon, and vanilla beans. Again, this style of beer is what years ago when Sam started the brewery, kind of build his reputation on that. We're going to try these different things. We're not just going to make a lager, an ale, a pale ale, a, a stout, a, pushing boundaries. And so, uh, again, this type of beer is perfect for fi those fine folks. And if you want to get into s some of these, uh, you know, dessert-style beers, again, check out their stuff. Well, enough about their beers. We're going to check out this beer. Oh, that pours nice and motor oil black. Looks black enough. I don't know if I want to spill this on the driveway. We got a fingers with a really dark khaki head. Plenty of those chocolate malts. I don't pick up much vanilla or marshmallow, but we'll see if that comes through on the palate. Man, that is nice. That is dark. That is thick. Uh, this is 10%, 10.5% ABV. This is a, even bigger than the 8% we were talking about. It kind of has that viscosity of a bigger beer. Um, on style, they say this is Russian Imperial Stout. It does taste like that. Uh, a little more sweet than just a straight Russian Imperial Stout. I'm not picking up a lot of marshmallow or the kind of graham cracker. Some people may substitute vanilla as that graham cracker. I'm not really picking up that. This is just a nice, big, chocolatey, sweet porter. Like, if somebody told me this was kind of a water... I don't want to say watered down, but a chocolate milk stout, I'd, I kind of believe that more than 
than the s'mores um, stout. Not that it's bad. This is a really good beer. I like it. Uh, it's just with the name Dino S'mores, you're kind of expecting that. And I've tried, you know, variations of these beers. And, it, again, those flavors do come through in other type beers. Yeah, that's just... Those flavors aren't coming through. This is just a really good, dark, chocolatey, little sweetness. Uh, doesn't necessarily have the milk... Uh, body to it, or that creaminess that you get in your mouth, but again, it holds that sweetness. Remember, lactose does not ferment, so that sweetness carries through in those uh, milk stouts. Overall, just a good beer. Just I was planning on something else uh, flavor-wise, but again, really worked out. Well, I hope you like this beer. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you need questions, comments, concerns, or beers that you'd like me to try, please leave me in the comment section, or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Until next time, bottoms up.